All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, this is the Growth Through Agriculture program webinar. Um, we're going to talk about how to apply for a GTA grant and loan. And um, my name is Angie. I work with the Montana Department of Agriculture. Um, the goal today is really to just help you determine whether a project would be a good fit for applying for Growth Through Ag funding. Um, and also, we want to provide some specific suggestions, tips, and tools to work on a complete and well-organized application. I want to give you just a bit of an overview. Uh, Growth Through Agriculture is a state-funded program. It's been around for a while. It was started in 1987. It was uh, started by the Montana Legislature. Um, there is funding available through June of 2019. Uh, the program is up for review and renewal in the 2019 legislature. Um, the purpose set by the legislature is actually to, and I'm just going to quote from the legislation, to strengthen and diversify Montana's agricultural industry through loans and grants, to assist the development of innovative agricultural business, organizational improvements and the commercialization and marketing of new agricultural products in order to keep with pace with the transforming agricultural industry and to create new jobs and expand small business opportunities. I know that's a really long sentence, but um, in its essence, um, we just use the words strengthen and diversify often, to strengthen and diversify and to expand Montana agriculture. So keep this purpose in mind as we get to some of the next areas of preparing an application. There, there's two types of funding available. Um, there are both grants and loans. Um, the maximum amount that you can request for a grant is $50,000. Maximum loan award is up to $100,000. But um, just looking historically in the last couple of years, the average award is about $25,000 to $30,000. Um, and that could be grant or loan, or um, there can also be a combination of grant and loan award. Our upcoming deadline for this year is November 1st of 2018 at 2 p.m. Um, and then we have a deadline for material verification. Essentially what this is, is if you make a mistake or if something was not received, it gives us a couple of days to double check that those items are received. It's not mandatory, completely optional, but if you do get your, your um, application submitted by the 26th, October 26th, um, we can, as staff, review that, double check that items were received. We've had everything from um, a fax sent upside down, so we just received a blank sheet, um, somebody accidentally attaching the wrong attachment um, to what would be otherwise a complete application. So um, we'll talk a little bit later about the minimum items for a complete application, but just note those two dates and those um, maximum award amounts. So question I think a lot of people, I'm getting these questions quite a bit the last couple of weeks is, should I apply for a growth through agriculture grant or loan? Um, so in order to answer that question, we're going to ask a couple more questions. Um, is the project that you're looking at, your business, your startup, expanding your business, is the project primarily going to add value to Montana's agricultural products? And does it have the prospects to create or retain jobs? Um, and, and overall, just an overarching question, does it expand agriculture? Um, that's a question you have to answer for yourself. And then if you can answer that question, the answer is yes, then um, it might be a good fit for the program. And those are questions you would later answer in the application. So let's talk about who's eligible to apply. Um, businesses, individuals, that includes sole proprietorships, um, public and private agencies, organizations, um, nonprofits, educational institutions, and local governments are all eligible to apply. Um, question I get a lot is what can the funds be used for? It's an including, but not exclusively limited to, um, equipment, consulting services, travel, promotion, and advertising, um, supplies and materials, communication, and data processing. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list, but I will tell you that in the past few years, 90% of awards have probably been for equipment purchases. 
Um, often this is production equipment that is adding value to the agricultural product. Sometimes it's been freezer or storage space um, to freeze or store the agricultural product that's being um, produced. Um, we talk about consultant services. Sometimes this could be like engineering uh, costs if you're expanding your facility. Um, maybe a, a manufacturing consultant to help you streamline your um, process so that you can expand your manufacturing. Um, it can also in include construction costs related to startup and expansion. Um, one note about travel, advertising, promotion, supplies and materials, communication, data processing. Um, these would be need to be related to the proposed project or growth of the business, not just ongoing communication or operational costs, um, and not ongoing not like your office paper or your phone um, bill, unless it was directly related to the expansion of your um, project. Um, next, we'll talk about ineligible uses of funds. Um, any costs that have been incurred prior to the application deadline, which this year is November 1st of 2018. So costs before November 1st would um, generally be considered ineligible, as would salaries and wages, um, usually food, unless for some reason you have something where you're promoting Montana agricultural food and an event and, and promoting the, the producers involved. But typically food is an ineligible expense. Um, institutional overhead or indirect costs or any political purposes. Um, so if you have gotten through this list and you think, yes, my project is a good fit, before you work on applying, um, I would recommend contacting the Food and Egg Development Center Network. Um, they can be found at uh, foodandag.mt.gov um, or if you go to the Growth Through Ag website or the funding opportunity, um, they also have direct links to their contact information. Um, and I would work with the Food and Ag Centers or the Small Business Development Centers, also those links are on the website, to develop your financial projections. Um, it seems to be this is the one that takes the most time for most applicants is to um, put together some financial projections to look at what you're planning to do and the cost with that. Um, most of you are, seem to be very um, passionate about what you're doing and able to write a narrative about what you're planning to do, but those financial projections are very key to determine um, for the, the reviewers to see that your project would be successful. Um, the next thing you would need to do would be to register on the online application website which can be found at fundingmt.org for a username and password. That might take a day or two to be approved. Um, it's, it's just me that's reviewing those, um, and I have to approve them and make sure that if you have a business name, that it's registered with the Secretary of State's website, et cetera, and um, before that's approved. Um, you also want to contact the Food and Egg Centers, the Small Business Development Centers, or your local economic development organization. There's a lot of really strong um, county and regional organizations or your legal counsel regarding some other items, including business planning, financial planning assistance, um, access and information about other grant and loan funding opportunities, um, regulatory issues in, with your business or project that can include if you're, if you're doing meat processing, there's regulations with that. If you're doing something with produce, um, whatever it is, there, there's typically some sort of regulatory issues and you want to make sure you know what those are and ready to address them. Um, you may also need to connect with your legal counsel, accountant, or the Montana Secretary of, State, Secretary of State's office regarding workers' compensation and find out whether that type of insurance is needed for your project. Um, if your business structure, are you incorporated? Are you registered with the Secretary of State? If you're an individual and you're going to do business as a sole proprietorship, but you're going to use an assumed business name, um, make sure that is also registered with the Secretary of State's website. Um, also make sure that as part of your business planning activities, 
that you identify, um, and I'd write these down. Um, if you're a paper and pen person or if you um, like doing things electronically, list these out. Identify the activities that will be completed. Determine your scope of work. Um, get some cost estimates. If you're buying some equipment, get a few estimates of what those are. Um, and identify some sources of matching funds. We'll talk about this shortly, but um, the funding, if, if you're, the Growth for Agriculture program cannot exclusively fund your project, there will need to be some um, other funding involved in your project. So talking about matching funds, there's a dollar for dollar match requirement. Um, some potential sources for that can be private match from your business or another business entity. Um, we've seen several innovative Montanans use crowdsourcing or Kickstarter to raise the match. You can get loans from your bank or a local economic development organization. Uh, commodity checkoff funds are another eligible use of funds. Um, federal grants are, are okay to use towards match. Um, some folks have used the USDA Value Added Producer Grant. Um, you can use US Department of Commerce, EDA, um, those types of things. I will make a note that match cannot come from another state grant. Um, so we'll have a little more when we get to the budget form. Um, talking about you can still have another um, state grant involved in your project, but you would need a dollar for dollar of other funds available, and we can work through that in a, a specific example later. So what's next? So you've registered for a username and password, you've contacted an economic development agency, a food and egg center, SBDC to kind of get started on some financial projections. Um, you also need to go to the Grow Through Ag what, program background, um, go to gta.mt.gov. In the first paragraph or so, there's a link to the program background, and just read through that. It gives you a comprehensive look at the um, program, what it can be used for, types of match, um, the process of the award, what happens after you apply, um, all kinds of great information. Um, contact, if you're looking, here's the website for the Food and Ag Development staff. Um, if you go onto that page, there's drop downs for each um, food and egg staff, and at the very bottom, there's just a, a PDF of phone numbers um, for the managers. Um, and if you decide to apply, go to fundingmt.gov, and then see this little arrow here where it says search here. Um, click search there and, and follow the instructions for a new application. Okay, so we've, we've talked about what we do up to now, now for the exciting part about filling the application out. Um, as I stated before, the application is an online. It's available at, at this website, fundingmt.org. Um, many state agencies are using this website, so you will see when you click search here, you'll see um, lots of other uh, funding opportunities um, as well. So here's the steps for an application. This is a good checklist to kind of uh, look through. You register online, you want to read the funding opportunity and the program background, you want to make sure you're registered with the Secretary of State, prepare your financial statements and your key financial assumptions. Um, those assumptions are basically everything from this is how much I'm going to sell my product to how much your rent is. Um, as you expand your business, how much are those costs going to change? Are they going to be steady or are they going to increase? You're going to want to submit a credit check release form. You can send that by mail, fax, or you can send it securely ver, ver, via an e-file transfer. We'll show you how to do that in a bit. And to submit your application online. Um, one note on the credit check release, that needs to be received by the deadline. So if you mail it now, then we'll keep it on file and um, you'll be done with that part. But if you wait till the week of the deadline, you'll probably need to fax it or send it um, by e-transfer. Okay, so the next thing you want to do um, here, we're just going to walk you through if you haven't registered online for username and password, exactly how you do that. Um, you go to the website, you click register here, see where the green arrow is. Um, you fill out the registration page. 
Um, I do request that you would fill out your business name exactly as it appears on the Secretary of State's website. That's what I'll be checking against. Um, if there's some unusual things when your uh, business name, it can make it a little, easy, a little easier for me to find and approve your registration in a timely manner. If you're using the assumed business name, please enter your full legal name and then the bi assumed business name um, for the organization field. Um, example, Mary Smith, DBA, Mary's Farm. And then once your registration is approved, your username and password will be emailed to you. And again, registration uh, approval can take a day or two, so um, do that sooner rather than later, and then go work on your financial statements and your um, uh, cost quotes and some of those things while you're waiting. All right, what's next? So. Um, one thing you want to do is make sure that each person that's working on your grant has their own username and password. Um, those should stay unique to you. If it's um, has your husband, wife, team, co-owners of a business, both of you should register. That way we will have um, on the back end, we'll have both of your email addresses, can send information to both of you, and um, it's just a best practice when um, so we can identify who's, who's doing the work on the project and who's approving things. Um, the other thing is if you are working with a food and egg center or grant writer or another economic development person, you can allow them to work on your application to read it, to um, provide feedback, um, but what you're going to want to do is email me and ask me to um, add them to your organization and then you can add them uh, to have access to look at your application. So um, once, once you've let me know that or, or they can let me know that, um, then I can add that person in, um, you can go into your application form and we'll show you where that's at later in additional contacts. Okay. So you're going to search and find, now that you've got a username and password, you're going to click search here and you're going to see a funding opportunity that says growth for agriculture and the application deadline. Oh, we had an extra slide there. Um, then you're going to log in. Um, it'll ask for user ID and password. Um, if you're looking for the username and password, the email address you're going to get it from is fundingmt at webgrantsmail.com. Um, if you don't get that registration, occasionally um, folks need to check their junk email folder or spam filter um, if it's not received. And feel free to check in with us if it's been a day or two and you haven't received that um, approval. Okay, so now you've logged in, your username, your password, you're ready to go. Um, a couple notes on navigating the application website. Um, you're going to see menu, help, um, log out. There's also um, a back arrow here, not your browser's back button, but the one in the software down here. Um, you're going to see add with a little add button, X and delete, edit and save. Um, there's also going to be places where it'll say mark is complete or submit, and that'll be in the middle right-hand side of the page. So that's just a couple notes of things to look for when you see instructions. You're going to click on funding opportunities and select the growth through egg funding opportunity. So you can do this from either way. You can log in and click on the funding opportunity, or you can search, find the funding opportunity, and click start a new application. Um, read the, again, read the full funding opportunity details, the attached program background, and then click Start a new application. See where the arrow is pointed there. And it will bring up your first um, part of the application. So your name should pull in as the primary contact in that form. There will be a field for a project title. You're limited to 250 characters, um, but please make it brief. Um, a descriptive project title, and then select the appropriate organization from the drop-down box. If you've maybe applied for um, another grant with another business with the state, you might have more than one, or you may just have one organization. So a couple notes about your project title. How important is the project title? Well, let me tell you, it's one of the most important pieces um, besides probably your budget and your financial projections. It's because it's the first impression that reviewers will see, and they will read it every time they go back into the system and review and reference your application. 
Um, so I recommend if you have a company name that you use your company name. Um, that recognition and repetition is, is helpful in, a, in associating your company name with the project that you're doing. And you can also use your region if you're um, expanding into eastern Montana or you're doing something innovative for northwest Montana. Um, you're doing something in, in um, Shelby or um, Dillon or whatnot, you, you know, you can put your company name, the city you're in, and what you're planning to do. So here's a couple of examples. Um, let's say organ the, these are all made up, so um, you can uh, see the kind of thinking that goes behind my brain when I'm trying to put this together. Organic Greens Co-op Expansion Project, New Processing Facility in Haver, Montana. Um, or let's say the Montana Meat and Bread Company, pairing up what Montana does best in the Golden Triangle. Or Jones and Jones Company, expanding storage and shipping for Montana pulses. So you, you have the company name and you get a sense of what they're doing. They're, they're expanding, they're going to be storing and shipping Montana pulses. I already know something about their project just from their title, but it's also not two sentences long. So it's something quick, easy, and referenceable. Um, Gooseberries, producing and marketing low-carb berries for the 21st century. Um, I would love if somebody did gooseberry project personally. I don't know if it's profitable, but um, I saw some of those at the farmer's market, so I uh, threw that in there. So anyways, these are some examples of, of good ideas that you can take and mirror in your project. Something that's interesting, brief, and informative. All right, so... When you're done filling that out, you're going to click Save, um, and you're going to go to this page where it has a list of all your application forms. Uh, this is a nice checklist. I mean, you know, because you're probably going to work on your app, you're going to go out, you're going to do other things, you're going to come back to it another day. When you come back, you can see when you last edited it um, in this middle section whether you've clicked a button that says Mark is complete. So that can be your check for yourself that, hey, I'm still working on that one or I've finished that one. Um, by the end, you need to have all of these checked as Mark is complete before the system will let you click Submit. So next you're going to click the app Application Preparation Checklist. It's going to bring up a long list of all, mostly yes-no questions and a few fields. Go ahead and complete that checklist. You may have to, this is, is kind of a, am I ready to submit? Um, so this may be the last one that you fully complete. It's going to ask you if you've applied before. Um, it's going to remind you to look at your project title and, and whether it's descriptive to your project. Um, I've had folks, believe it or not, that just put, you know, applying for a grant. You know, it, it's not ineligible, but it's, it certainly doesn't help letting us know what they're applying for. Um, if you're working with a small business development center, you need to indicate who that is and who you're working with. Um, that just helps us if um, we can work with those folks and let them know, hey, we've got a, a question, or um, if they helped, they can. Um, we also invite them, uh, if you get selected to go on to present to the council, we invite them to also participate so they can uh, cheer you on. Um, the Food and Egg Development Center or Economic Development Organization, or if you're working with a county extension agent, whoever you're working with, put that in as well. Um, and then it's asking, you know, these are some of the things you need to do. Have you completed financial projections in the required format? And we'll show you later where to find the, the, um, the format that we require. Have you completed business plan? It's heavily recommended that even if it's a, a very simplified business plan that you have written one out, um, that's more for your benefit than anything, but it also helps us to under, fully understand your project. Um, have you read the GTA program background? I think I've said that at least five times now, um, but it is very important to understand the program and the requirements and what would be required of you if you were awarded funding. Um, have you prepared a list of key financial assumptions? If the answer is no, then you need to contact uh, somebody to help you work on that. Have you prepared cash flow statements? Have you prepared a marketing strategy? Um, have you registered with the Secretary of State? And there are several other questions as well, but if you get to where you click no, um, then you probably need to 
on the business preparation items, you probably need to go back and connect with someone with the Food and Egg Center Network or an economic development agency. Um, okay, the next part of the checklist is going to ask you about matching funds. So um, you can um, request that the council consider funds that are expended before the deadline. As we talked about before, typically ineligible for the GTA funding, let's say you want to request $10,000 to buy a piece of equipment, that would need to be purchased after November 1st. But let's say you have been expanding your business related to this project already this year, and you've already spent $10,000 on um, some construction. So you could ask for those $10,000 in instruction, but you need to let us know here if you're asking um, to consider prior match. So um, that let us, lets us know and how far back, just to make sure that we know you understand how far back match can be considered. Um, for this funding deadline, you can go back to November 1st of 2017. So any costs incurred from November 1st of 2017, you can request as considered um, to meet your dollar for dollar match. Okay. It can also be a new match if, let's say, you're buying a $20,000 piece of equipment in 2019 and you're requesting 10 um, from this program and you're going to put in 10 yourself, that's okay as well. Um, if you want to double check, the, we have those dates on the website of the eligibility dates of um, when you can spend the funds. All right, next part is a personal guarantee and a credit check release. All right, so we do require a personal guarantee for any awards. Um, so if, the, if you awarded funds, it can be you or it can be a, another person um, that would be um, willing to take personal responsibility for your grant. And if it wasn't dealt with pro appropriately or the reporting, but that person um, personally guarantees to repay it if things are not dealt with properly on the grant. Um, also, a credit check release is required um, so that we can pull a credit check on all applicants that um, are requesting funding. So you're going to check a box that you complied with that and that you're going to send us a credit check release. And also it's okay to send that early. You can send that now. Um, we don't have to wait till right before the deadline to send that. Once you're done, make sure on every page you're in to always click save to continue. You'll lose your data if you leave the page without saving. You can save as you go. You can save several times um, while working on page. Now, as you're navigating through the forms um, to continue, you can either click mark as complete or you can click go to application forms and it'll take you back to that list of all the forms. Okay. Click on the blue application form names to go to whichever form you want to do next. Complete each form and keep track of your forms by marking them, them as complete when they're done. Um, when you're fully done, you click on application details over here on the left hand side. And then that you can review your whole application all together, read it all the way through. Um, and then uh, once that's completed, you can click Submit. Um, all right, so next we're going to talk about the brief project summary form. Um, you can collect, select the project type, the agricultural category, the project location. If you want to click multiple, maybe you're a business expansion and promotional, or you're doing um, dairy and food processing, you can um, click on an item, click your control key on your keyboard, and then you can click on more than one item. Okay. So when we get to the brief project summary, it should be brief. Um, you have a 5,000 character limit. Um, describe your request in the first two sentences, who is applying, how much, um, what your proposed activity is, and why. This is, again, we talked about the project title being very uh, important. This is, again, when they first open the application, they're going to scroll down to this and um, read this, and this is where you get to capture the reviewer's interest, give them a, information about your project, and then when they come back after reviewing maybe 50 applications to look at your application again, you're going to remind them what the key points of your project are right here in this part. 
Um, once you hit save on this, this form, you'll see two additional fields. Don't freak out that there's some numbers there you didn't enter in. Um, they'll, these amount autofill once you've completed your budget. It's just a nice reference for the reviewers to go read your reference and then see how much you're requesting. Okay, so we're going to give you an example of a good first two sentences on an application for your brief project summary. I've cut it color-coded so you can kind of see how we've addressed all the pieces. So Mary's Innovative Bakery, LLC, is requesting $30,000 to purchase equipment necessary to expand its current product line from muffins to cakes. The products are made with Montana whole grains and pulse crops to meet increasing regional and national demand for their products. So in two sentences, captured who's applying, how much they're requesting, in purple you can see what they're requesting money for, whether it's equipment or marketing or something else. Um, you can see the agricultural impact, see the yellow items, um, and you can see why it's important in red. So in two sentences you can get a very good sense of your project, and then you'll go on and provide a little fuller detail. All right, character counts. I get questions about these all the time. How do I know how many characters I've done? All right, we got some easy tips and tricks here. If you, I first of all recommend everyone draft your narratives in Word or another word processing software and save, save, save. You don't want to just be drafting these on the internet because what could happen? Power outage, you could have, your internet could pop you off. All kinds of things can happen and I don't want you to lose your hard earned work. So do that and then if you're using Word, you go up to the review tab and you click word count. And in addition to the words, it will give you the character counts. So this will tell you, okay, right now we're at three to 400 characters. I got plenty to go for that 5,000. But if you're in a field that requires only 250, you probably have too much. So then when you go to cut and paste and try to hit save, you'll know why it's not letting you hit save, okay? There's also, if you don't have Word, that's okay. I Googled and there's several online character count tools that you can use straight through the internet. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the general criteria for funding. Um, the program is overseen by a council of seven members and they have to look at this criteria to determine um, how competitive you are in receiving funding. So, project has to primarily add value to Montana agricultural products. Does it have the prospects for commercial success? given the current personnel, experience, and resources of the applicant. Um, does the project have the prospects to create and or retain jobs in Montana? Does it primarily process or add value to Montana's agricultural products currently produced or potentially produced in the state? And does it have a management structure allow to allow the Agriculture and Development Council to reasonably conclude that you can comply with the ongoing reporting and monitoring activities? I know that's a lot of items, but if you look at this and then as you're going through the application form, you're going to see that most of the things we're asking for are to meet this general criteria. All right, so here there's actually an application form where you have to address each one of these items and how your project answers that question. Um, do this in your own words, be straightforward, and be brief. That's the best thing I can say. Um, the reviewers are are straightforward people. They don't need flowery language, um, but they do want to hear from the heart and they want it to be very straightforward and brief. Okay, so then your next thing you're going to be asked for is deliverables. These are the, like, if you were going to see me in person at the end of the project, something you could hand me or something you could, in our world now, that you could attach online and send me electronically. This could be photos, they could be a PDF of um, sales figures, um, it could be invoices of things that you purchased. Um, I like a combination of photos and documentation because those, those really show us what you um, have done on the project and then you will probably also have, see one of our staff in your area stopping by to visit as well. So put in here what you think would be uh, the best deliverables for your project that um, specific to your project. Um, then you're going to fill out the commodities form. I get a lot of questions on this, so I'm going to tell you a couple of things. If your project, I we have to write an application form. 
that is for every type of agricultural product in the state that could be eligible. So we tried to put this form together to fit as many projects as possible. So in the example of, okay, you're a rancher and you're going to add value to your beef and you're going to sell it. Then you're going to put your volume at top, which might be the head of cattle, it might be the pounds of meat, you know, maybe it's this many pounds of beef and this many pounds of pork, and then that value, like uh, when you sell it. Um, or if you are a processor and you are buying um, wheat from a producer or an organization and you are adding value to it, how much are you buying per year? Then you're going to do your five-year projections um, down below. So this shows what you're doing now or if you're a startup, what you're going to do the first year and then the five-year growth. If for any chance you are a project that this doesn't quite fit your project, give us a good, this show some specific numbers that talk about your agricultural impact, um, some quantitative data. Um, every year I probably get one that just doesn't quite fit the mold. Don't freak out. Just give us a good sense of what you think that would be. And if you have some specific questions, feel free to give a, an educated guess on this. Say, I don't quite fit the mold of the commodities form. This is what I've drafted. Does this meet eligibility? Send me an email, and I can let you know yes or no if you've met the eligibility requirements for this form. Okay? Marketing strategy. You just want a brief description that you've looked at your markets, what your future targeting is. Is it in-state, out-of-state, within 10 miles within your home, uh, from your hometown? Um, if you don't have a marketing strategy, you haven't looked at it, um, contact your Food and Egg Development Center and, and have a discussion about it and um, work on developing that. Business information. Got a nice form here. Um, fill it out with your current information. When you get down to this section, the anticipated two-year financial results of the project. Oh, let's go pick one. Okay. Couple of things. For jobs, you can only put in a, a digit like seven, not 7.5, not a range of seven to nine. Uh, you will get an error when you try to hit save if you um, just need to put a number. Um, if anything outside of that, when you're looking at um, sales or payroll, um, please just put in, in numbers. It can't be a range, okay? All right. So now we're going to talk about your key personnel. This is pretty straightforward, but here's the instructions on how to use this form. See the add button at the top with the little green plus next to it. You're going to click that button, and um, it'll provide a form that allows you to fill in the name, title, and important information about your first key personnel. Um, that could be the owner. It doesn't have to always be a company employee. It could be a technical advisor, um, but you have to have at least one person. So it might be the owner, and maybe you have a food safety expert that's helping you with something. It could be um, the owner and and your maybe your son or daughter that's helping you grow the business. Um, give the background experience of each so we know who you are um, and why you're doing this project. And then, so after you've clicked that Add button, this is the form that'll show up. Note the character limit. The character limits in each field are at the bottom. They're listed right under the field. So this one, you have 500 characters. Um, and then to keep adding additional personnel, keep clicking Add and hit Save for each person. Okay, so now we're going to go to the Objectives form. Again, you're going to click Add for the data entry form to um, appear. All these instructions are also on the little top part in front of these forms, but um, as, this, as uh, we told you at the beginning, we've made a PDF of this presentation. It's on the website if you really want to have that next to you reference as you fill out the application form with screenshots. This is, is your tool. Okay, so objective form. We're going to ask for your objective, like building the facility or purchasing equipment, whatever it is you're trying to do, um, a detailed description of the activity, the deliverable, and the timeline. So this timeline should be within two years of the date of application. If you're successfully awarded funds, um, we're looking for the performance in that time period. Um, occasionally, 
you know, if you it's maybe two and a half years, um, send me an email and we'll look at what you're trying to do. Make sure that's eligible, but try to keep that within two years. Keep your objectives brief. Um, just a few words, add detail. So for instance, we have purchase equipment and then in the description, pur purchase an industrial mixer and freezer needed for a new product line, cost quotes attached. I'm gonna buy it in March, I'm gonna have all the equipment um, by December. Or build out of a new lease facility and the description has where it's located and what type of construction work and saying if there's anything that's referenced to this that's in the attachments form. And again, that timeline is within the two years. Now, if you need to edit your objectives after you had saved, you've left, you've come back, you want to edit it, the blue under the objectives is where you would click on, and it'll bring up that form where you can edit it and save. The budget form. Now we're getting down to the fun stuff. I like the numbers. It's my favorite. All right, so you've got to complete the objectives form first. You can't do the budget and then do the objectives form. So you have to do this in order. That's why we kind of have the application form set up like this. So you're going to click Add. And when the Edit screen appears, the, this little drop down, see the second green arrow? That When you click that drop down menu, magically, the objectives that you listed on the previous form are going to show up, okay? So you're gonna pick one of those objectives and then you're gonna use the cost description. So when you're developing your objectives form, think about your budget and the items that you want in your budget because you need to have, um, they need to be tied back. You could have used the same objective like expanding your manufacturing facility and you have like five budget items, you can use the same one for all five or you could use different ones. List each cost separately. If you're buying two major pieces of equipment, list them separately so we know what they are. If you're buying a lot of small items, um, maybe you're doing a bakery and you maybe don't list every pan separately, but um, you could say the oven, $10,000, and then um, supplies and materials, $20,000, and then in the attachments form, you could have an Excel breakdown of all those items and could have, you know, $100 worth of pans and $50 worth of um, muffin tins or whatever. So, okay, so we're going to get to our first example here. In this budget form, I have, I have put in here, so I picked the same objective twice, one for the plumbing, one for the electrical work. You see I put the... Um, those were proposed by this applicant as their match. So you've got $5,000 each there, the total cash match of $10,000. And then they put purchasing of the walk-in freezer. That's what they're requesting the GTA funds for in this example, and that's $10,000. So as a check, we've got $10,000 in GTA, $10,000 in cash match, total project cost $20,000. So this would would be um, meet the qualifications of the program. There's at least a dollar for dollar match and they've detailed out the cost description. So it's very easy to glance to see what they're doing and how that's gonna work. If funded, these objectives and cost descriptions would carry over to your status report, your payment requests and the contract budget forms. To edit the budget, you click, so let's say, just like the objectives, you've, you've filled out this form and you want to edit it, go to the blue objective name and it will open up that form so you can edit it again. And to delete an objective in this screen after it's been saved, you have to go um, click on the objective name in blue and then click on the delete button. It has a red X next to it. It looks like my, my arrow got a little off. Um, and click on the delete button in the upper right hand corner. Now we're going to look at a different type of budget form. Uh, this time we're going to talk about in kind match. Um, if you have done grant requests before, this may be a term that's familiar to you. If not, this may be a completely unfamiliar term to you. And that's okay. Um, so in-kind contributions are uh, non-cash, um, but 
they should be calculated at the actual market price of services rendered. So if a professional is donating their services to your project, um, maybe that's an architect that's um, providing design plans for free, or you have labor that comes out and works on your project. Um, it's, but it's a maximum of 10, 10% of your match can be in-kind. So we'll work through that in a specific example if you look at the numbers below. Um, the per hour valuation of the in-kind match can be no more than $25 per hour. You must list the name of the individual contributing the in-kind uh, work and estimate the number of hours to complete. And then please double check your totals. Um, so look here down below. Now we have, again, that 10,000 walk-in freezer, but um, let's say they have 9,000 in cash match, and then they've um, the owner is gonna put in, do the carpentry on building the building. So he's valuating his time at $20 an hour times 50 hours for that additional $1,000 in match. So as we add that up, we have uh, $9,000 in cast match, plus $1,000 in in-kind. We also have, we have that $10,000 for dollar match with no more than 10% of the match coming from in-kind. Okay, so the next form we're going to talk about how we're using the funds. The budget form is kind of um, what you're spending everything on. Sources and uses is where the fund's coming from. Um, in this form, again, you're going to use that green plus button next to the word add in the upper right hand corner. You're going to enter GTA first as the requested source. So you will click on that, it asks for the source of funds, you'll type in GTA, the commitment status will be requested because you're requesting it, and then the use of funds. Um, if it's in the example of previous, it'd be the walk-in freezer. If it's equipment, um, carpentry, some um, design engineering for your um, facility and then the amount. So that's how much you're requesting. Now, each additional source of funds, this could be your bank or your credit union, um, your Kickstarter campaign that you raised $10,000 with, and what are you going to use those funds for? Um, if you are requesting other state grant funds that are not eligible to be counted towards the match but are a part of your project, please include them here so we know. Um, if you're using Big Sky Trust Fund, or worker training um, funds in your project um, or any other state funds, we ask that you would also include those so that we're aware. The other state funds, as we mentioned before, do not count towards the match requirement, but can develop de demonstrate your project viability. So once you've clicked that Add button, here's the form you'll fill out with the source, the commitment status, and the use of funds. Um, Click Save once completed. Here's an example. It provides a snapshot of where all the funding is coming from. We've got like Growth Through Ag, a bank loan, and some Big Sky Trust Fund. Um, you notice that the Growth Through Ag amount is fully matched, um, and then some by the bank loan, and then there. So that wouldn't the Big Sky Trust Fund is not considered the match, but also shows a larger picture of your project and where the funds are coming from. Okay, next we're going to talk about the financial attachments form. All right, so the first, you will click on the blue name of the attachment. So you click on cash flow statement, balance sheet, and you're want, going to want to use the GTA cash flow statement and balance sheet template. It's provided on the funding opportunity and on the website gta.mt.gov. Um, other formats will not be accepted. If you have um, some you know, information from your own books, um, you really want to translate that if you need some help. The Small Business Development Centers in Montana are amazing, um, or your local economic development organization, they can help you make that transfer of your information. Um, also going to, if you are a current business and you have prior year financials, um, you're going to want to attach those here in your own company format. Um, if you are a startup and you do not have that, um, you just need to up, upload a blank word document uh, that says startup, we don't have prior financials. You're going to attach your business plan, your um, bid or cost quotes, 
and your key financial assumptions. Okay, so once you've attached your prior your financials, your business plan, um, if any of these you have multiple attachments, you can either, you have a couple of options, you can scan or merge to create a single document and upload it, or you can go into the next form, which is the attachments form, and you have an unlimited number of attachments. Um, so you can attach them down there. So let's say maybe you have 10 cost quotes, so you can attach those down below. Um, in the attachments form, that's the next one we were talking about here, click on the add button and the blue green plus sign. There's, like I said, there's no limit. Um, you can attach other items. I do ask that in your description you let us know what it is, like picture of the proposed equipment or um, photo of the building site or um, um, a cost quote for the freezer or that type of thing. Um, you can ask if you have letters of support, um, people that are participating in your project or customers that are big fans um, and want to see you grow. Uh, maps, um, if you are um, a tribal nation that's applying, um, we do request that there be a tribal resolution just so that we are informed that the tribal council is um, aware and has approved uh, the submittal of the application. And then uh, when you click the Add button, you'll click Browse, find your document, enter the description, and click Save. Finally, um, we've got to the last application form. This is the application certification form. Essentially, you're just letting us know that um, a certified person has reviewed this application before it's submitted. Um, you enter a name of the authorized representative that's submitting the application. Um, Call or email me if you need help registering an additional person that needs to be that. Maybe you work for the company and you're filling all of this out, but a final person needs, authorized person needs to do that. We can help you get them registered so that they can log in with their own username and password to fill out this form and submit. A reminder that the credit check release form must be received, not sent, but received by the uh, deadline. And it's okay to a reminder that you can send that before it's submitted. A um, couple other things on the certification form. Uh, if you have any concerns about confidentiality, I'm um, just going to let you know, do not attach anything you consider confidential online. Um, if you have something that you consider confidential, um, something, some trade secret, whatever, um, email me, don't, don't send that information to me, but just let me know that you have a confidentiality issue. It's um, an item that's trade, trademarked or trade secrets, and um, let me know. Then we will contact our legal counsel to review a request, and they will let, let you know if we consider that confidential and how that needs to be handled. Um, because what you're certifying here is that anything provided in this application um, is public information, and um, that you waive any right to confidentiality. So uh, Montana is a, a public information state, and most information submitted in grant applications is public information. So just letting you know that that's what you're affirming on this form. Final items to note, um, applications from tribal government or to assist a tribally owned business uh, should include a tribal resolu resolution that can be attached a Attach a scanned copy, you can fax or mail that. Before you hit submit, select application details to view the entire application together. Uh, you can click print to PDF to save your application or print for your own records. And before you hit submit, and this is really important, you've done all of this work to date, uh, get through the application, gather data, financial projections, have someone else read your application. Um, Picture someone that's reading 50 applications, and um, the quality of the writing doesn't need to be flowery, but spelling is important, um, capitalization. Have someone else read it. Make sure it makes sense to them, that they understand, so that maybe isn't super familiar with your project. It could be a neighbor. Um, it could be um, a niece or nephew. It could be someone else in your household. Um, but just have someone else read it. If you're working with one of the food and egg centers, um, if you can get to them a, um, 
don't ask them the day of the deadline, but if you can give them, get your application drafted a couple weeks before the deadline, ask them to read over it, um, give you some feedback. Make sure you submit that credit check release form. This is one of the minimum items to be considered an app complete application for review. So if not received, um, it cannot go on for further review. So I cannot stress that enough. Submit your application online by the 26th, October 26, 2018, um, if you'd like that material verification service where we verify that we've received all of the information to consider an eligible application. All right, so now to submit, you've done all those items, you're going to select mark as complete on each form. So the checklist of all the forms, you're going to click on submit. You will receive a confirmation email. If you have not, if you've clicked on submit, check two things. Check to make sure that the check boxes are on all those application forms. If they're not, go in and, and make sure that's done and then hit submit. Or if you've hit submit, and you haven't received an email. Check your spam, junk mail folders, etc. If still you're, it's not received and you're certain it was submitted, email me at gta.mt.gov to check. And then I can verify, oh, well, you might not have gotten the confirmation email, but we did get it, or no. And let's do some technical uh, to checking to see if there's an issue. Once submitted, you will not be able to make any changes. But if you submit by the material verification deadline of October 26th, and if staff notes there is an issue, um, a mistake was made, um, somebody, you attached the wrong attachment instead of your financial statements, something like that, we will allow you to attach the correct item um, and make that change. But the final deadline is November 1st, 2 p.m. After that, um, we will accept no more, will not accept any further applications, and you will not be able to change your application. Okay, so after you submit, what's next? Then staff will review your application for minimum eligibility criteria, and then it will go to the Agriculture Development Council for review and scoring. Um, they're going to score it on these um, criteria, basic business considerations, and some of those things we talked about, food safety, the, um, county sanitary and different regulations, Did, have you addressed that you are aware of what applies to your business, um, is, are you registered with the Secretary of State if you have an assumed business name um, or incorporated? Do you, um, are you aware of all those regulations? Agricultural impact, uh, that's pretty straightforward. Your economic impact, that's jobs, that's sales, that's how are you going to um, provide economic impact? And what's your p potential for success? Um, innovation, originality, are you the first one to do this in the state or the first one in your region? Um, or are, is this a pretty standard thing? Um, geographic considerations, um, where are you located, and is this project um, important to the area that you're in? Out of a possible total score of 40. So what happens with that score? Well, then uh, the top scoring projects will, um, the council will send invitations for presentations to the top scoring folks. And then uh, tentatively in February, uh, the council will come in person to meet and those applications that were the, the top scoring ones will be invited for a presentation. Um, that will be in Helena at the Montana Department of Ag is tentatively where that will be at. And then final decisions should and announcements should be expected um, by March 1st. Okay, now here's some resources, um, websites, talked about it all through the application, so you shouldn't have missed that the application uh, is at fundingmt.org and the full funding opportunity description. The Growth Through Agriculture website is at gta.mt.gov. You can also look at that website, scroll all the way to the bottom, and it does have um, links to prior projects that were funded if you have some interest in that, and the program background link is also here. Okay, so now if you give me a, just a moment, I will unmute for some questions. One question I, I get quite a bit, and I, we talked about it in the presentation, but feel free to email me anytime during the process is if you are working with a food and egg center like Michael or um, Jan Tusik or Joel Bertolino um, or the, in Great Falls Development Authority in Great Falls, um, 
that you can email me and say, hey, I'm working with Michael. Um, can you add him to my organization? And I can do that pretty quickly. And then you can go into your application and um, add them so that they can have access. Um, that's a, a pretty good tool so that you can have conversation back and forth about your project as you put in information in and they can give you feedback back. My biggest thing, I guess, would it be, would it be appropriate to email you if we do have questions uh, down the road during this Absolutely. application process? All the time. Send me, um, email them to me, and I, and I like emails, and the reason why is if I get the same question over and over, I can, um, we can be very consistent in our responses, and if I do get questions, um, you know, more than once, we can also post some of those questions and answers on that funding opportunity so that we can provide better service to the rest of the applicants. So, um, Michael, you had some great ones uh, this week, and um, I've been getting a few other questions this week. So as I get those questions, it helps me know what else we can clarify for, for everyone. So yes, email me. Um, it's either anelson at mt.gov or um, gta at mt.gov, either one. And then you probably also saw on our website, we have a couple of technical assistance calls. Um, just kind of an open forum Q&A, uh, one in September and one in October. Um, so collect your questions for that as well if you want to um, dialogue more than a, an email. I will let you know just very honestly, uh, it's me. Um, when I say staff, that's that's me. Um, and so I, I also do um, several other activities at the Department of Ag. And so um, to make sure I give um, good information if by any chance you haven't heard from me, like you send me an email and it's been a few days and you haven't heard back, um, if you could just uh, call me and, and leave me a voicemail that you sent me an email or resend it to me. I do have, um, we've had some increased um, state security and occasionally if your email has something unusual, it will go to my spam or junk mail. I try to check that weekly, but if you have kind of an urgent issue that you're trying to hear back on, um, feel free to call and leave me a voicemail. I am out of the office quite a bit, so I'm checking email on the road as I travel um, with some of the other projects I work on. Um, as we get closer to the deadline, the last two weeks, I'll try to stay pretty close to home and answer those questions as quickly as I can as you get to the more time sensitive um, questions. With that, if you have any other questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, we can let you go. Thank you for participating.